Welcome to breakfast, Galapagos style. I'm not a fan of fermented and half regurgitated fish for breakfast, and thankfully, Silver Sea do not include it on the menu. Because of the 7 a.m. start on most days, breakfast in the restaurant started at 6, and so you needed to be up and ready because you will need the calories for the morning expedition and you can't take food ashore under any circumstances. Good job there's plenty on offer here then, including granola. Yay! Before we enthusiastically jump on a Zodiac full of granola and coffee, let's quickly show you around suite 430 on deck 4. It was an explorer suite with three large windows overlooking the promenade deck and was fairly cosy, but hey, we loved it. And it is a tiny ship, remember? The tabletop vanity area was wide and well appointed with a couple of sockets for your camera chargers. We were given some chocolate, fruit and champagne and the snacks here were all Ecuadorian and really good quality. The window overlooked the promenade deck but hardly anyone ever came down here so it wasn't a privacy issue at all. The bed was very firm, but I think I've said that about Silver Sea beds before. And the linens were consistent with other ships in the fleet. And we were given these rucksacks and water bottles which proved indispensable throughout our stay. TV is equipped with the usual excellent Silver Z system, although to be honest, we never switched it on for the entire time we were on board. Wardrobe space is at a premium, but was adequate for a seven-nighter. Luckily we had complimentary laundry, which was incredibly efficient and meant clean and fresh clothes every day. The bathroom was snug and traditional looking, but it all worked. And this is an older than usual expedition ship, so in that respect, exceeded our expectations. Let's leave our suite and concentrate on the first call of the day which was Prince Philip's steps on Genovisa Island, and we immediately hit a small furry problem. Our little friend here was reluctant to move, but with a bit of gentle shooing, he reluctantly gave up his sunbed, and we promptly claimed it with a towel. You can tell we're on a cruise, can't you? These steps are named after Prince Philip's visits in 1965 and 1981, and given the steepness and unevenness, there's no way Prince Philip would ever be able to make it up them today. At the top, we were greeted by a seabird colony, and in particular a Nazca booby pointing the way we should go in case we didn't know how to read an arrow sign. The guides on the Silver Galapagos are incredible. They are experts in every little thing about these islands, and most of them were born and raised here. They take you around and explain every aspect of the terrain, the wildlife, and for the time of year, what you expect to see. Today, we were looking for owls amongst the seabirds, and we weren't disappointed. Owls have no natural predators on the islands and so they have no reason to be nocturnal. Therefore they hunt during the day and have no fear of anything around them, including humans. 
This one had just caught a Galapagos petrel and stood brazenly in front of us for a while on top of its prey before tucking in. If you watch carefully, he pulls off the petrel's head and swallows it whole. <laughs> Someone give that guy a glass of water and some Gabascon. We saw four owls on this hour long walk and with mouths appropriately agape, we headed back to the ship for lunch. Thankfully, Galapagos petrel was not on the lunchtime menu at the grill today, but this huge freshly caught red snapper was, served up by the head chef himself. This little area of the grill changes daily with a speciality, nearly always presented and served by the head chef. It's a lovely touch and the food feels so organic and harmonious with your immediate surroundings. After some healthy fish, and an unhealthy dessert, the ship moved off towards another island. You get used to not stopping too long in one location. This is not a relaxing cruise. Firstly, we did a zodiac tour around some mangrove swamps that the expedition team had discovered earlier to be a shark nursery. Although I didn't manage to film any, the water was teeming with baby sharks who use the mangroves as shelter from predators while they grow to become predators themselves. Then it was back on board for a beautiful early evening sail away party with some tasty small plate food. Then a glorious meal in the restaurant of lobster and chocolate, although not together. Again and again, silver seas snap you back from the natural world into the luxurious with effortless skill. I hardly felt a thing. The next morning we headed to Rabida, where the pelicans patrol the beach and the flamingos, well, they just stand around and preen themselves. Who cares if they look like God created them from a feather boa and a couple of drinking straws? They obviously don't care. In fact, these odd looking creatures have a whiff of superiority about them, even if they do skip leg day at the gym. Finally we had enough time for a spot of snorkeling off the beach, where we saw some incredible marine life including marine iguanas, a sleeping turtle, I hope he didn't have his head stuck in that coral by the way, an incredibly well camouflaged octopus, and a shark, thankfully not a hungry one. Punta Pit has a similarly beautiful beach, this time populated by sea lions and pelicans. Sea lions are such posers, they really know how to work the camera. But we weren't here for sea lion selfies, we were here to climb, and climb we did. <laughs> and we thought Prince Philip's steps were tough. At the top, this is the only site in the Galapagos Islands where you can see all three species of boobies and two species of frigates nesting in the same area. It is a veritable bird city of courting, egg-laying, roosting, 
chick hatching girls and boys and a complete feast for the eyes and a tug for the heartstrings. This particular blue-footed booby, completely unafraid because she knows nothing on the island will take her eggs, stands above her eggs to shade them from the sun, keeping them cool. Did you know that boobies lay two eggs and when hatched, one chick kicks the other chick out of the nest because it wants all the food for itself? The next time you think your siblings were mean to you when you were kids, well, they never ran you under a bus, did they? Or maybe they did. Oh, sorry if they did. Wherever you walk here, there are booby couples dating everywhere, and they don't care if you're staring at them. It's as if they don't see you. Well, you do feel like a bit of a gooseberry. These two actually made me cry. Yes, physically cry. This one scene was probably the highlight of my whole cruise. Yeah, really. This couple were relaxing on the edge of a rocky outcrop, admiring the view across this little valley here just as if on a romantic first date to a beautiful location. He's on the left and she's on the right. They look across at each other, kiss, and then the female asks him to dance. He does as he's told and he dances. Then they just sit together in silence and enjoy the beautiful scenery in front of them, living in that moment, the first blossoms of romance. But my bubble was burst when we were told that boobies don't mate for life, just for a season. So with that devastating revelation, we had to leave them to it and head back to the ship. On the way, this little fella wanted to join our party. He seemed so interested in our group and wanted to follow us. But the expedition leader said we couldn't keep him, and he was too big to fit in my rucksack, so we reluctantly left him behind. Dinner that evening was back at Hot Rocks. On a ship this small, there are only two venues for an evening meal, excluding room service, but being outside in the warm Pacific air is to be enjoyed as much as you can, and Hot Rocks never disappoints anyway, so it's a win-win. We end this penultimate episode back on Punta Pit Beach because those utterly delightful sea lions messing about in the sea were just too entertaining to cut from the edit. If you've enjoyed our Galapagos journey so far, please do give this video a like and subscribe to our channel, or you'll potentially miss part four, the final part, where, amongst the smorgasbord of incredible scenes, you can witness the fascinating, perplexing, and at the same time revolting spectacle of two giant tortoises making love. And it's not just the visuals, it's the noises. And do we get to finally realize our dream of swimming with sea lions? Find out soon as this incredible adventure draws to an end. Until then, adios amigos. <laughs> <laughs>